Hi. <laughs> so here's how this works. When I decide to go on a fiber trip, I decide one person I really want to meet, and then I build everything around that. Guess who the one person was I wanted to meet? Molly. You're so embarrassing. That's embarrassing. Molly. <laughs> so tell me. Tell me your fiber. Oh, wait. I have questions for you, but tell me your fiber story. My fiber story. Yeah. How what does that mean? Like how I started knitting? Yeah. Or? When was your first exposure to knitting? Oh, this is Molly of a homespun house. Yeah, my name is Molly. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we already know each other for years, so. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Um, I feel like my fiber story began kind of when I was born. <laughs> I've never heard that before. My, um, well, my mom is not creative at all. Like, I mean, as far as like doing handwork. But um, her mom, my grandma Sue, is, she can do everything. Quilt, sew, embroider, macrame, beading, like every single thing. And grandma Sue is still with us. Yeah, she is. She turned 85 this year. Happy birthday. She turns 86 this year, wow. actually. She's in her 86th year. Yeah, exactly. Um, oh my gosh, I don't even know how to tell this. And so I... Grew up in a little town called Cambridge in Wisconsin, and my grandma lived there as well. And I spent, I would say, most days at her house. And um, because your mom was working, and no, like... I just loved spending time with her. Like my mom would come there too. Oh, my mom actually was a stay-at-home mom, mm -hmm. and she ended up having like a childcare where she had about five people. That's how I met my best friend. Oh, so that she could be a stay-at-home mom, That's she did cool. that. So anyway, she would bring me to my grandma's all the time, and we would. I would watch her knit or I can just remember listening to her needles clicking and so anyway she opened this house called a homespun house she bought this like the oldest house in Cambridge she and two of her friends purchased it and um, they really wanted to be able to sell all handmade items just from artisans around United States amazing and it was this beautiful house like I can remember um, going there because it was probably like a two minute walk from the elementary school that I, that I went to. So after school, I would walk over there and I would just walk all around the house and look at all of the handmade things. And I mean, they would be sitting there knitting or doing embroider the women while they were working there. And yeah, I felt like, I feel like I was always kind of surrounded by just women mostly who mm. made things. My, my grandpa, her husband, uh, was a woodworker so he was always making and carving things and she was always painting them for the shop um, so they were kind of always creating things together mm -hmm. or she was on her own um, so this is her business yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. she was a stay-at-home mom too she had seven children oh my goodness. but when I was born you yeah. know all of her children were older my mom was the second to the youngest so um that was kind of like her creative endeavor like just her fun yeah kind of thing to do with just her fun thing to do. It feels <clears> like <throat> you almost learned the crafts and things from being with it. Yeah. It's like you pick, especially because your brain is so spongy that young, it's almost Definitely. like you pick yeah. up on it just being next Around to it. Around all the time, yeah. And the cool thing is, is um, my grandma, her mom, was actually a live-in tailoress. Is that what you mm. would call it? Live in. So she was someone's yeah. on call. She would no. She would move in and live with a family mm -hmm. for like a couple of months, and she would sew their clothes for them. So then, when my grandma was little, she would then sew all of her clothing, and then my grandma sold all of her children's clothing. Yeah. So that's that was a job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the reason you're living in with them is because you're just because it's so much work to give them a new wardrobe or Yeah, something? making the clothes for them. It, I mean, that was quite a while ago. That was right. in the 1800s. Right. So she would live with more posh families yeah. and so fancy clothing for them. And then yeah. she could say, like, I need to try this on you. We need to do a measurement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We need to do a fit test Yeah, today. she had, like, a room, like, in the top of their house, I think, is how my grandma <sighs> would explain it, where she would stay and work on their clothes. I've never even heard or thought about it. I didn't know about it. I mean, I've known about it for some time, <sighs> but that's the only time I've heard somebody mentioned something like that. That's yeah. so interesting. Now, if yeah. you were in the 1800s, mm -hmm. would that appeal to you? Oh, you I cannot set? answer that. I have no idea. Sewing? If I didn't have a family, maybe. Yeah. But I think you could have had, had to have family. that skill set. I think it was before, because she had three children. I think it was before they were born. That sounds actually really interesting. Yeah. Because you get, 
So I always imagine what the doormen and women in New York City know about us. Oh, I imagine so. Just, I imagine so. You know, researching our patterns and mm -hmm. how we move through in and out, what time. That would be a similar sort of... Oh, definitely. You right? hear conversations, yeah. I'm sure. Witness things. Yeah. <gasps> oh, I kind of like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay, so you were born in the fiber. Exactly. So my grandma eventually <laughs> taught me how to knit at some point. So that was your first craft knitting? E probably. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Did you I mean, learn to crochet? Yeah, I've crocheted. I've done embroidery. Um... But it sounds like knitting is what. Yeah, knitting is definitely, definitely my favorite for okay. sure. Okay. Definitely, yeah. I like sewing children's clothing, but knitting is my most favorite. Yeah. Thing to do, yeah. And so she taught you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then was it your lifestyle from then on out? Like, were you always no. knitting? No. No, I've kind of gone in and out of knitting. I knit for a while when I was young. I can remember from the time I was probably twelve to sixteen. I knit clothes for my baby, my future babies. That is Isn't young. That hilarious. Yes. All that I wanted to be from the time I was young was a stay-at-home mom. Like that was my dream. And a and a a singer. <laughs> Did, you <Yeah>. know? <laughs> Did you know? Did you know? I wanted to be like a rock star or a pop yeah. star as yeah. my daughter would call it. Pop star, yeah. Yeah. But just even moving in a few parts of her house here, you can see how dedicated she is to her children. Oh really? All of the art in your house oh, okay. is by your children. Yeah, that's true. And the space <clears throat> is an open space for children to really be able to move freely and learn and explore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just saying. I would that. say that, yeah. 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 It's definitely a, a playable area. Yeah. And you were saying that you have never left them. No. You like being with them. Yes. Yes. Raise I your hand if you it. also like being with your children. <laughs> if, if I am away from them, like the other, yeah. when they went and spent the night at my parents' yeah. house, I did not enjoy that. Like... It was nice to be alone with Robert, like, but we're alone all day. I mean, yeah, you have we, can, we have time. lunch every day together. Yeah. If we want to go and do something, we can do it during the day. It's like, yeah. I love them being here. I love knowing they're sleeping. Yeah, they're safe. They're yes. sound. I bet you go check on them when they're sleeping before you go to bed. Oh, we co-sleep. Oh, we sleep do? in the same bed. Not in our bed, but we have two beds in our bed. Oh, now. you have a sleeping room. Yeah, yeah. See. I'm one of those. Well, you know what? My, when my husband travels... Have my babies at home. Did you? Yeah. That's awesome. When my husband travels, my little one sleeps with me. Oh, see? I, I love that. She's my little heater. Oh, is she really? Yeah, Are you I, freezing when you sleep? I'm very cold. So I just kind of like turn over and like I put the small of my back like right on her body. I'm like, you're my little heater. Oh, she loves it. so cute. I'm sure. Because she was kind of my only attachment <laughs> parenting child. Because mm -hmm. I wore that ergo where they're facing yeah. in all the time. And that actually makes a big difference. Yeah. That compared to the Bjorn. With crying, you mean, or? Just um, bonding. Mm -hmm. It's a, I'm, I'm bonded to all three of my kids, but she in particular, she's six, she still has a very strange connection to this part of my body, right oh, here. I know that sounds weird, weird but I, I think it's- I don't think that sounds weird. she spent a lot of time right here, with her face right here. Does she like touch you a lot here? She or? wants to touch my neck every day. Oh, that's And cute. it's kind of a ritual, and she'll say, she even says, touch your neck. She says it like that, touch your neck. She's seven. She's six. Six, okay. And so I, I still think it's age appropriate. I and don't it's, think it's weird at all. Well, and it's, it's becoming less and less, but it's like this very interesting relationship she has with this part of my body. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if she does it in a bad moment, I'm like, don't touch me right now. Like, you know, like if it's yeah. stressful much. or something, mm -hmm. you know, but in general, I let her do it. You know, and I think it's sweet. Mm -hmm. And I think that co-sleeping is really nice and beautiful. Yeah. I would have had my babies at home, but I was a little scared the first time. I can understand having a fear. The first time it was not planned. We wanted to have it in a birthing center. But you didn't make it? Mm -mm. Both of my births <gasps> were so fast. Like from the time oh. my water broke with the 8OD, I had her in, I think, three and a half hours. With Ruby, it was like one hour. It was so fast. Oh my gosh. I did do epidural free for two. Two out of three. Yeah. And I highly recommend that, but it's also way easier to say that when you have reasonable length bir um, birthing experience. Yeah. Like one to three hours, I think almost everyone could do. It is, the shorter the, the birth though, the contractions are crazy. Like you have. That's true. And more, and closer together. Yeah. Yeah. 
This but is not about all her. birthing experiences are so different. You can't, yes, you cannot compare. Totally not. But I'm just I'm just saying that for the people who are rolling their eyes. We both had really short experiences, which makes it easier to not have the epidural. Yeah. Because I think if we were doing those contractions for 24 hours. Yeah, I can't imagine. No. It, it, you know what I'm I saying? I cannot imagine. Or even 10 or 12. Like, it just can't. You can't mm -hmm. sustain that. So. Yeah. But I'm just saying that for the people yeah. who oh, definitely. are feeling judged. No. <laughs> there is no judgment. I know people who have had those. Long. I don't judge anything. No. Whatever you want to do and whatever. Just saying. Okay, so you always wanted to be a mom. Yeah. And that happened pretty young for you. Yeah. So, and it happened in Germany. I, I feel like for American standards, I wasn't that young. Like, I feel like really? most people are mid-twenties when they have their first baby. In Germany, mm. like in Berlin, you, you would disagree? Well, I'm in New York. Yeah, which is different. I, I mean, think it's, it's probably different. comparable to like Berlin. Yeah, I bet America, you're right. But where I live now, I'm Midwest. definitely like a super young mom. Even really? with my six-year-old, I'm still on the young side. Yeah, it was the I'm same 40. in Berlin. I was definitely the young mom. Like yeah. everybody who had a child who was Adoji's age, like in the class with you, the moms, yeah, were, were ten years on you. Definitely, yeah, yeah. 10, 10, 15 years. Yeah. yeah. So, but what I'm saying is, you realized your dream like almost right into adulthood. Yeah. And and in Germany, so everyone wants to know. What's the difference between Germany and Wisconsin? Especially because when we watch Ger here, Berlin and Wisconsin, I don't think you can generalize Germany. Okay, thank you. Same, same as America. Totally. You know, like you said. Berlin and, and where we are here in Madison. Let's talk about that. Oh, it's very different. And talk about it as a cultural experience and also in the fiber arts, please. Oh my goodness. Go. That is a hard question. Um, okay, yarn shops, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to be mean. Don't be but mean, yarn shops, for example, I feel like in Wisconsin and just in general in America from the ones that I've visited, I feel like they're very welcoming in the sense that there's a place to sit and knit in most yarn shops in Wisconsin. There's a table. Some places have coffee. Um, and in Berlin, I think because it's the city, there aren't mm. that the, the yarn shops aren't that big, so they try to pack as much yarn into the shop as they can. So it's really not, it's a place that you go inside of, you buy yarn and you and leave. You leave. Mm -hmm. And I personally didn't have that many nice experiences mm -hmm. of shop owners mm -hmm. in Berlin. And it's not because you were considered a tourist or... A, no. Because you spoke German. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, usually I wasn't even acknowledged. Oh, wow. Yeah. Usually not acknowledged. Um which I know people have social anxiety. So that's something that I also take into consideration. I know, but if you are a retail worker, yeah, I that's know, something I you know. need to work on. I'm just, I always try to be kind well, about those Wisconsin things. that's the Wisconsin in you. <laughs> I, I just don't go back. That's just the kind of thing. I maybe yeah. give it two or three times. Yeah. And then, yeah, so in Wisconsin, I feel like people are generally pretty welcoming, asking you if you need something, not overly hovering. Mm. Yeah, that's a key part. factor too, Definitely. right? Definitely, yep. Paper source, calm mm -hmm. down with your hovering. What is paper source? It's a chain, and everywhere you go, they just hover. Really? Yes. Oh, that sounds horrible. That does not sound Calm horrible. down with your hovering paper source. <laughs> I'm just saying. They're public. They can handle it. It sells paper. Yeah. It's an awesome store, but I'm like, just give me a space. Oh, ah, okay. Give me a second. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, it makes I, me I not would, spend my money there. Go. No. It's bad. Yeah. Okay, so that's an interesting though, comparison, though, because, and I'm glad that you pointed out Berlin is a city. Mm -hmm. And it is really hard to get. You can space get everywhere a without a car too, which yeah. is so nice. Like yeah, I miss nice. walk. I miss my bicycle. I, know. I miss my bicycle, yeah. riding the bike to parks on end. Yeah. You lose weight when you move to a city. Oh, just from I can walking, imagine. Just from your change in steps. Yeah, I don't know if I did. I feel like I've kind of always been the yeah. same, but <laughs> some people I did. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, you don't walk as much in the, in the No, uh-uh. We like to go for walks around, but, but in general, I mean, if you want to go anywhere, you have to drive. Um, it's just different. People are definitely different. Like in Berlin, you don't smile at anybody. You would not smile at anybody you walk past. Did you try it once? No, 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 no. I, no. You figured that out quickly. Yeah, and for me, that was, I really, I really kind of enjoyed that. Like, because you're just in your own well, zone? Well, okay. When I first, I guess it's hard to say because I lived in Berlin for 10 years. So yeah. 
Um, living in Berlin, I did enjoy kind of that you keep to yourself. Mm -hmm. Like when you're in the store, there's no conversation with anybody. You don't really, you would never talk to a stranger. That's not a normal thing. And here, if you're in the line anywhere, people will be like, oh, you bought that? I just got some of that. It's so great. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Okay, but did you start a homespun house in Berlin? I did, yep. Okay, so what gave you the idea? Because you had studied music. Yeah, which I stopped before I you moved. stopped, and then you moved to Berlin. Did you just choose it? Because you just wanted the no. change. So I was studying musical theater, which I haven't said. <laughs> I was studying musical theater, and um, with two double majors, actually, in choral... Um, Conducting? No, in like choral in teaching. Oh, like music ed. Choral, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, musical theater, mm -hmm. which was kind of the main thing that I wanted mm -hmm. to do, because I'm not really a choral singer. That's not my favorite style. But, um, yeah, so then I was in a longer relationship. We broke up. He broke up with me. <laughs> Still regretting it. And no. <laughs> he is. Yeah, exactly. Not you. I'm sure. Him. Yeah, I met him. <laughs> and um, I was good friends with his sister, still am. And she actually au paired for a family in, in Berlin, oh. and they were looking for a new... <gasps> A new au pair, yeah. And so I started to work for them. So I au paired for them for six months. Did you know any German? No, I didn't even know hello. I didn't even know how to say hello. Nothing. So how did you learn it? Well, Immersion? in Berlin, you don't really need to know it. If you even start to speak, especially when you're first learning to speak German, if you start to speak in German, most Germans will answer you in English because they want to use their English or they're just snobby. Because they know you're American. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and they'll just pretend they don't understand you or... That was how it was in the beginning. In the beginning for me, that's yeah, how yeah, it yeah. was. So, um, so yeah, I moved with the au pair family for six months. Then I actually moved back to America. I probably stayed for one to three months. I can't remember. And then I really missed Berlin. So I moved back and... Um, the fir my first day back, I had a one of my best friends who's Irish. I begged her and begged her to go out with me. Um, and she finally did. And so that evening I met my husband, Robert. The first evening, which was so random because he's not even from Berlin. He was there celebrating his best friend's 30th birthday. So that was 10 years ago. Yeah. And Maybe you met him years like at a restaurant, at a bar? Yeah, yep, at a pub. Mm -hmm. Goodness, and then yeah. you started dating right away. Or? No, how no, does no, that no, work no. in Berlin? Because you're not smiling at each other. Well, so he came, how do you get he each came other and sat work? by me and asked oh. me if I liked elephants. That was the first thing he said what? because I had a necklace on one of my grandma's okay. that she gave me that had a big neck, a big elephant on it. Yeah. So he was like, "So, do you like elephants?" <laughs> and I was like, "What?" <laughs> And he was talking to us, and I, I did not enjoy speaking with him. No. Because I wanted to hang out with my friend. I was not interested in boys. Yeah. I just was enjoying hanging out with her, talking, just drinking a beer. Yeah. And yeah, so then we went... Do you want to hear this story or no? Totally, okay. 100%. <laughs> so then we went to this place called Tajeles, which has... Um, like, they usually have live indie-style bands, mm -hmm. and they have... You can play ping pong there, and you can dance. And um, I love to dance. So we, we went dancing. Robert and his friend followed us there. And um, I went to go and get a drink. And I was ordering my drink. And I was this, the song came on. I thought it was really good. I didn't know the band. And I turned to look. And I saw this guy dancing. And I thought he was the best dancer. I was so impressed by his moves. I, of course, went over and started dancing. And it was Robert who is an amazing dancer. <laughs> Crazy good. So you didn't recognize him? From the back, from the yeah. Back. Mm -mm. Because I, di I didn't really, I wasn't paying that much attention to him when he was talking yeah, to me. Yeah, because you were just kind of. Yeah, I was really short answering him. And I realized that he was following us, but yeah, so I went over and started dancing and I realized that it was him. And then it, your impression of him changed? Because of the yeah. dancing. Yeah, yep, and then there was this, a uh, Russian guy who would not stop leave talking to me. He wouldn't leave me alone. So um, I kissed Robert to get him away. <laughs> to get him to leave me alone. <laughs> it worked. 
Yeah. And Robert was like, hmm, okay. Yeah. yeah. You do like elephants. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> so then he gave me his number, he went home and he drove to Berlin because Robert was a professional handball player at the time. He played professional sports. What? Yeah. So then he drove to Berlin, which was about two hours, which is very far for a German to drive. So far. Yeah. Every weekend, <gasps> stayed with his best friend, and we pr went dancing like every, every weekend for a long time. And then once I finished my au pair job, I moved in with Robert. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So anyway, that's a very long story to tell how I started a homespun house. Well, yeah. Then how did you start? So yeah. So once you moved in. Yeah. We got married. We had Elodie. Then she came to the age of where she maybe would like start going to school. Robert wanted me to start working because he was going to acting school. Like, mm -hmm. um, at that time we were living on like just enough to pay our bills. So yeah. he really wanted me to start working and I want, I wanted to be a stay at home mom. Yeah. So that like crushed my soul. Yeah. She was like three years old and yeah. I thought that was way too young for our family. Yeah. And, um, so Oh my gosh, I don't even know how to tell this. In Germany, you have this thing called Eingewöhnung where you can go and stay with your child when they're at school, which is really nice. You, everyone has to do it. You can't just drop your child off the first days. You have to slowly transition them. So you have to take like a week to a month where you go for an hour a day, then like three hours, you leave them. So it's like a really slow transition. Like Literally, it took three months. Because she anyway, would just get sad. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was really, really hard for her. Her e her teacher even said that she wasn't ready for it. But anyway, mm -hmm. so, so then so I you ended couldn't up... go to work because that took a lot longer than expected. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So then I decided that I wanted to start. That also sounds like it was stressful. Like you were probably stressed out about that. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, I guess I was a bit stressed. I would say. Just because you're thinking like. Why do, I mean, I don't know if you're like this, but as a mom, I'm going, well, how come the other kids only took a month and... No, that didn't stress me Oh, good. Okay, because good. I didn't think she was ready for it. To like, begin with. Yeah. But then would you have thoughts like, well, what am I doing here if I don't think she's ready? My mom instinct is telling me yeah. she's not ready. What am I doing here? I felt like that, but yeah. Robert was so persistent in yeah. saying she needs to go here. Like, yeah. you have to start working. So yeah. I was like, okay, we're, we're going to do it until she's ready. Like, yeah. I'm not going to start working until... So we had some arguments about it, definitely, mm -hmm. but we came to the conclusion of we're going to try it, of yeah. course. So then, um, while it worked for a little while, she was in for half days, I started sewing project bags, actually. Mm -hmm. And do you say project because of Wisconsin or Germany? Project. I have no idea. Because I feel that Americans say project. And I didn't know if that was your influence, because sometimes in Wisconsin people say things a little differently. Project. <laughs> I don't know. That sounds weird to I, say. I, project. <laughs> Does it sound weird? It sounds right when you say project. That sounds weird to me. But see, you it say sounds project, like you're like going ah. You say project like some f like I feel like the Swastika lady say project. Or maybe the, it's a German like the thing French then. Canadian. I feel like maybe you picked that up. Well, in I Berlin. think Robert says project. Yeah. I'm just wondering. Probably. I lived there for 10 years. I know. So that's why I was wondering if it was there or here that made you say project. Probably. Berlin. There. Okay. Project bags. Okay. So you started that. Yeah. I started selling project <clears throat> bags <clears throat> and I did that for maybe a year. And, um, I was friends with Kristen from Volenbein at the time oh, we were talking a bit cool. and I started this project called the cozy memories blanket. I named it yes. that. Oh, you saw that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's when you have all your little indie yeah. dance games left over. Yeah. At, at the time. Square, so. Yeah. That was my idea at the time to use it from like leftover projects and things like that because I had all of these leftovers that I really wanted to use into something special. So mm -hmm. that was the idea. Mm -hmm. And I thought that I would give it to Ado D, which is my oldest daughter, when she went to university or something like that. When she decided that she wanted to move away just to have this special blanket to take. Did you put her in any of those baby clothes that you knit when you were 12 to 16? Yeah. You did. Definitely socks, pullovers. I totally did. So you did, did keep them? Yes. Okay, and good. they were not that wonderful to be honest, right. but I did. But it's the same idea as yeah. blanket. Yeah. It's just yes. a oh different Oh my gosh. Time. When I look yeah. at the squares that I used at that point, I would like to cut them out. Really? But I, I won't. They're just not aesthetically pleasing. Well, you can always make another one. 
Yeah, and I'm, I'm working on it, a different okay. one. But anyway, so... Um, so you started the Closing Memories, and yes, you were friends with Chris. Yes, yes. And so I started talking to her, and she said, you should just, like, dye some yarn. And I, and I came up with this idea that I wanted to do the project bags along with mini skeins. Just start small so oh. that I could do, like, a Cozy Memories kit, because that was kind of my thing. Yeah. And so I started to dye yarn on September 11th with my mom. She had been visiting us. We dyed our first skeins together, and I loved it. It was so much fun because project bags, you can't really get that creative with it. I mean, you can always change the fabric. You can change the size of the bag or add a few pockets. But for me personally, it was not a creative outlet. It was just a different fabric, cutting hundreds of pieces of fabric all the time. Um, so yeah, once I started dyeing yarn, I slowly, I would say, stopped um, sewing and making the project bags. And this was all through Etsy or a website? This was Etsy at the mm -hmm. time. I switched over to a website pro probably after a year. Mm -hmm. I would say a year or two years. Um, yeah, and then I just started dyeing yarn and I love it. It's, it's so, you can be so creative and... Were you doing it in your kitchen or did you have a gosh in our apartment, which was so small. I cannot even tell you how small it was. I don't. And can you even believe looking back no. how you did it? And it's horrifying to think I was dying in my kitchen where my family was like, it is so toxic. <laughs> that is seriously horrifying. Like in our, we were eating in there. I know people die in their kitchen. I would never ever recommend it or do it. Okay. Ever. So you learned from that. Definitely, yeah. So but then they're all fine. The kids are okay. Yes, yes. We moved into a different flat, a larger flat then, and I had my own dye studio. It was mm -hmm. one room. Mm -hmm. And now that we're in a house, we've built a dye studio downstairs. So it's so much nicer. It's so much nicer than what we had. Can you get a lot more done now? Because of the dye studio? Or is it just... Um, I would say I dye pretty much the same amount of yarn that I dyed when we left Berlin. I mean, when I first started, it was pretty small scale, but now I would say I dye about 750 skeins a week. That's a, that seems so. like a lot. Is that a lot? Yeah. Yeah. But because I have the space, it's... I can breathe. I like... I would say I'm, I like pretty minimalistic things. I don't like a lot of stuff around mm -hmm. me. I cannot think in, yeah. in that sort yeah. of a, This like, is like the most knickknacky it gets in this yeah, room. Yeah, in this room, yeah. Which is not very knickknacky. Just lots of plants. Yeah. But, um... Well, you need negative... Is it negative space? Yeah. It's like you need space to fill up with other things, even if it's just in your mind. Definitely. You know yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. an idea needs to mm -hmm. be able to... Yeah. If it's messy, I can't do anything. Yeah. I, I like... I like everything clean. Yeah. Yeah. When did you start <clears throat> the social media and the podcast? When, when did that start with, in conjunction with the dying? Like you try okay. dying, dying's working. It's becoming more of a business. Talk about that sort of part of the story. I think I where started Robert's the like, podcast. this is working, right? Cause Robert was probably like, cool. It's working. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I can remember. That's funny. Now I have like a memory come in my mind. So I started the podcast when Adori was probably three months old. I had a best friend in Berlin and she had a son who was the really? same age. Really? But I thought, oh, so you were, so you were podcasting before you had a business. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So you'd already been doing it. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And we started the podcast together. She had to move away. So we probably only did 15 episodes together. With the friend? Yeah. Mm -hmm. She was like my soulmate friend. That was so sad when she moved away yeah we were like the same person are they still on youtube can we see those no nope. early episodes mm -hmm. okay no she wanted them put down she I wanted them off yeah. yeah we respect that yeah um and then i started sewing project bags pretty early on i would say um i wanted to because i wanted to do what my grandma was doing mm -hmm. like i was so inspired by by what she was doing so i wanted to start doing the same sort of thing um, sewing project bags came pretty quickly and then like a year, yeah, was when I started dying and... And so the podcast when she left just was sort of about... 
knitting. But I was selling project bags at the time. So it probably it was, happened five episodes in, so about seven years ago. So it always kind of had a business angle to it. Like, this is what I've been making and this is what you can get from my shop. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So you just kind of continue. Because so. that's really helpful for people because they see what you've been working on and mm -hmm. then they want it. Yeah. Yeah. When did you start doing the Vlogmas? Two years ago, that's so it. So you've only done it two years? I think so. And are those the only... Or is it three years ago? I don't know. I feel like I've only watched two years Okay. Worth. Do you think that... Or are those videos unique on your channel? Do you have any others like that? No. Yeah. I would love to do more vlogging. Like, there have been yeah. times when we're like... Because there's Vlogtober, yeah. there's... Or if there's something special your family's doing, just yeah. vlog it, right? Yeah. Like sometimes I also wonder how interesting that people is. People like I mean, it. People like it. Vlogmas is is fun, yeah. especially because my husband does it. That yeah, makes it fun. really fun. I always I love watching his footage because I have no idea what he's doing until the He just hands you the card and you <laughs> upload it. <laughs> Rub our hair. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I think that what people like about it is it's fun to see the way someone lives and even though it's not every part of your life yeah it's enough like you know the avocado toast and the girls are having their little moments with you know you can tell they have a certain aesthetic of what you give them to play with uh -huh. and that's really interesting to people yeah and it, it, it's a different side to the podcast yeah. for sure yeah and it it kind of informs your business and makes the pic the picture a little bit you know more whole and i think we get to know you better and want to support you. You know, I think it's, uh -huh. I think it's actually. I it's definitely just, enjoy watching. I mean, Vlogmas is a vlogmas very is... overwhelming thing. You can't watch that many of them yeah. because there are so many, but yeah. there are definitely, yeah, I look forward to it. When you're dyeing yarn, so you have time off because you said you sit in this room with your grandma a lot, Grandma Sue, mm -hmm. and then you also watch podcasts, right? I have phases, I would mm -hmm. say, where I watch podcasts. What um, are some of your favorites? <laughs> I really like Maker's Haven. Um, I like Legacy Fiber Arts. I like Espace Trico. Mm -hmm. We were talking about them. And you like um, the Yarn Cafe? Yeah, I like Yarn Cafe Creations. Espace Trico, they're really, I feel like, um, they're really inspirational. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, they knit such beautiful things. Yeah. Everything they knit are things I would wear. Like I classic, love. wearable, yeah. stylish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Yarn Cafe Creations, yeah. They're yeah. just a, a fun podcast mm -hmm. to watch, definitely. Yeah. Do you watch them or why do you mention them? Because you talked about them in your last episode. Oh, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have a few questions for you. Um, did you, so how did you get into the dyeing yarn? Did you take any classes or watch any videos? Or you just started no, experimenting? No, That's one thing that I actually really like, that I know a lot of people don't really like, is that there isn't a lot of information at all about dyeing. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't know how much citric acid you have to put in your, in your water, how much water to use, what to heat it at, how to, you know, use your dyes. Um, but I really like that because I feel like it makes it so that, you know, each dyer really has their individual way of dyeing. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if there were too many tutorials, so many of the dyeing styles would be so similar. Mm -hmm. Um, so I just, I experimented. I mean, yeah. Speckling is definitely a thing that you learn mm. for sure. From I'm this. still learning new techniques and, and ways of dyeing. Um, but no, I just learned from, from trying. Yeah. yeah. Had you been artistic in that way before dyeing? I feel <clears> like <throat> it's a really specific art. Do you paint ever? Mm -mm. No. Did you ever dye fabric? Never. Like no. even for a Halloween costume? I've never really been someone who's worked with paints. I mean, I like to doodle. If my daughter is drawing and I'm drawing next to her, I will definitely get into it. Mm -hmm. But and what about co like no. color theory? I feel like color theory is a thing. Because you wear black. You, like, you wear a lot I wear of black. I wear black, yeah. I would say I mostly wear Okay. How, oh, we already talked about how did you meet your husband. Does Robert miss Germany and his career there? How's he doing with the stay-at-home dad thing? Robert definitely misses acting, for sure. Mm -hmm. But I feel like, and he knows this as well, to be an actor, like a successful actor, you can't really have a family. I mean, it's... 
It's very way difficult. too difficult. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely. I mean, if he were to be acting, the times that you're acting, it's pretty much in the evenings yeah. and weekends. And um, so he would never get to see our girls. And that's something that he doesn't want to jeopardize. I think. Yeah, sacrifice. That's yeah. a big sacrifice. Yeah. Um, I think it's something he will do at some point. Like he would definitely like to do some side projects or even if it's, even if it's just community theater or something yeah. where it's, it's always going to be He's not there. making a living or anything on it. That would be... No, that would be fine. So recently, there's been some PETA ads about how using wool is cruelty. And there's plenty of vegan knitters out there. And even the wooliers, they are vegan who have a wool company. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different points of view on this. So you've become a vegan recently, past couple of years. Yeah. And how does that play into having a wool business? Yeah, um... For me, I'm just very aware of where I'm getting my yarn, from what mills. Uh, when I lived in Germany, I feel like that was really, really nice because a lot of the mills that I purchased my yarn, I was able to visit or know the farmers mm. or kind of be in close contact. One of, um, one of my favorite mills, I have two bases now that I carry in America that are from Germany. I was able to work that out, which was I'm so happy about. Um, but I'm just aware of how the animals are treated. That's definitely something that I look into. Writing the mills, um, who I'm getting my yarns from, just that their animals are, are treated well and aren't harmed. Or um, I guess I'm, I'm just trust, trusting of people and, and asking, definitely. So mm -hmm. I feel good about the yarn that I sell. Yeah. And, because I'm definitely um, vegan for animal rights and animal cruelty reasons. That's one of my main reasons. So. For being vegan? Yeah. Do you, what about honey? Honey is one thing that I do. I don't really even like honey, but if it's in something, I'll, I'll eat it. Like I'll bake with honey or, but no, I eat honey. I feel like honey is the equivalent to wool because bees job is to make honey. Like that's a lot of, what they do. A lot of people though, the reason why yeah. vegans is because they're sprayed. So the bees will be uh, sprayed, but they don't, they've found a way to not do that anymore. Okay. So you, you don't have to do that, but okay, good to know. Yeah. Caitlin asks, what are your favorite vegan cookbooks? Oh, she glows. I love Oh, she glows and minimalist baker. I use those all the time. They're definitely my two favorite. I wondered if this was a joke question. This is from lyrical knitster who said, do you have it in mohair? Is that a joke question? Oh, I <laughs> She must be asking about something. She must mean if I sell mohair. I know who she is. Oh, she, you do? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I didn't understand. I feel like I know who she is. She's written me on Instagram. Okay. She's coming to the Madison Knit In. Okay. And she's hoping that I'm bringing mohair. Got it, got it. Like, she'll see all of your favorite colors and then, yeah. Do you have this in mohair? That must, that must okay. mean. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so, <laughs> I thought that I wrote in parentheses, I think this is a joke question. So Red Cobra is asking, did you go to school with a certain career path in mind? Did you end up in that field before starting a homespun house? So you kind of talked about it for one second, the music. Well, I've done it. I did. Okay. So I went to, okay, this is actually a little bit off track. I went to school for a univer university for um, musical theater. And then I went to school for esthetology and massage. Oh, like so a, like a trade I totally haven't even talked about it. Yeah, to, an, mm -hmm. to the Aveda Institute in mm -hmm. Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually worked at the Adlan Hotel. You know where that is? Mm -hmm. It's where Michael Jackson hung his baby over the... Oh. It's like the... Blanket. The fanciest hotel in Berlin. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So I worked there doing makeup. And um, so I did that for a while. Professional makeup and after skincare. The, after the au pair or before the au pair? In between, okay, or no, after, yeah. When I like when I moved in with Robert, and we first moved to Berlin. That's yeah. what you did mm -hmm. before the baby. massage, yeah. skincare, and makeup. Yeah. Wow. Um, so I did do that, but I didn't do anything with music. No. But I won't be doing skincare and stuff like that again. No. No. I was just listening to an esthetician talk about how she's passionate about it, and if you end up in that and you're not passionate about it, it's a very difficult job to do. If you're not passionate, yeah. Yeah, because she said, I actually like touching people, like mm -hmm. she likes the contact, mm -hmm. and I could see people not liking that at all, like as their oh, job. I love, if, you, if you're if you in like a really nice spa, yeah, it's so nice. 
Yeah, she said she really likes it's, it. So, it's such a calming environment. Mm -hmm. Like, if you if somebody comes in, I feel like it's important to be a person who really feels people's energy because mm -hmm. I'm always like when I'm massaging them or you know I'm doing the little motions. <laughs> But this is exactly what she was talking Putting about. Putting energy into them. Yes. Like you're really focusing on this and it's just a really nice thing. You you feel bonded to people you yes. don't know. That's what she said. Yeah. She said it's oxytocin, like when you're breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. Probably. I Do you agree with that? that? Where did you get the plant stands, the wooden ones? <laughs> the like this sort of a thing? I don't know. TJ Maxx. TJ Maxx. <clears throat> you're not putting this on the Why not? <laughs> okay. Is it easier to knit with needles that have more of a point or less of a point, more blunt? I would say it depends on what you're knitting. I like Haya Haya Sharps. I use them Me for too. everything. It's my favorite needle brand. I like those too. Will you ever release your Alpine shawl, please? Oh my gosh. This, there was a please. I've been asked this so many times. I have no idea. I would love to. The pattern is completely written out. It's been written really? for years. You need a tester. Oh, I've had testers. <laughs> I just have to make it look pretty. That's literally it. Does Molly and her husband know how awesome their videos together are and will they consider making more? <laughs> I have a question and answers video that has needed to be edited forever with it, Robert and myself. The yeah. two of you? Yeah. That's cool. People just asked lots of questions, yeah. What do you miss most about, they say Germany, but I will clarify and say, what do you miss most about Berlin? I mean, you've touched on a few. I feel like I miss m most everything. I miss I, the people. I was shocked when you said you were moving. I, I my heart hurt because I was like, I she's gonna miss it so oh, much. Oh, I knew that. I realized that. Like every month we would get closer, I would feel like, is this the right thing? Like, but I mean, we sold everything we owned. We sold everything we owned. We. Like I said, it took forever for Robert to get the papers. Mm -hmm. Like it just yeah. there was didn't so say that on camera, but you told me yeah. off camera that mm -hmm. it was a big process. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. I miss everything. The people just the environment, like I don't I can't explain it. There's so it's the where we live right now is nice. It's nature. But Berlin is that way as well. I mean I think it's the greenest the greenest city in Germany. Mm -hmm. So it's, I miss it. Okay, this is one, what, what made me think of the phone questions was when you were talking about the spa. Mm -hmm. And I agree with this person. So this is Longview Creations. And she said, could you ask Molly if she has always been so mellow? She seems very zen-like, and I've always wondered if she's always been that way. Also, does she do anything specific day to day to be that way? And or what has helped her? I totally agree. Because I feel like when you get on your videos, you just kind of have this, there's just something, it's grounded, it's in touch with yourself, with your family, what you want. It's like you have vision and intent. That's what I get from watching your videos. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that resonates with you, but I think that's what she's talking about. So what do you have to say about that? One word. <laughs> Happiness. <laughs> you just choose happiness. Yeah, I, I wasn't always happy. I, I've had a lot of hard times in my life, definitely mm -hmm. as a teenager. Mm -hmm. um, and before I moved to Germany, um, I would say meeting Robert changed my life. Really? Robert is... He, he completes is, you? Like that Jerry Maguire? He movie? is the most positive person. Like oh, Robert okay. doesn't get frustrated wow. by anything. He is like super positive. He always sees the best in things. He's not fearful of anything. Like, I don't know. It is nice to have a partner like that. Yeah. And did that influence the business? Did that make you feel brave? Like, I'm going to no. have a business. No. I, he wasn't really any part of it at all. I kind of told him what I was going to do. He supported me, definitely. I mean, he's always supported me and been excited about those things. But He's proud of you. Yeah. I think he is shocked. He was shocked at a point, you know, that because he doesn't work anymore. Yeah. So the so yarn yeah. is doing it all. Yeah. And it's he's, so nice. He's shocked about knitters that were so into it. He's Probably. not, he's not shocked that you're successful. He's, I think he's surprised about the business stuff. That's what I think that's people are going to exactly. hear that the wrong way. I think they're just surprised. Yeah. He was surprised that, Oh, knitters. 
Yeah. Like you that's have what customers I mean. mm-hmm. and they want yarn every yeah. week yeah. or month or whatever. Yeah. It's like, true. Yeah. Because if you're not part of a culture, it's always eye opening. Like, definitely. Comic Con or a professional handball player yeah. or this business with ping pong and dancing. Like, if you don't know about those things before, yeah. it's kind of like, whoa. Yeah. Why do people keep needing yarn? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's really, really fun. Yeah. So the business has been 10 years old now? No. No. Oh, no. Because she's I've known three. Robert for 10 years. Sorry. So, th- like, four years. I yeah, think I started it's... Project Bags in 2013. So six years. Yeah, but I haven't dyed yarn. Oh my gosh, I don't even... Four, four or five years, yeah. I would say, is about how long it's been. Yeah. How has it changed? The business? Yeah. I mean, you've mentioned... Well, when, when I first started, yeah. because Robert was a professional handball player and he was going to acting school, so I would dye during Erudy's nap times and Robert wouldn't be home until 10... 12 at night. So, so she'd go down for the night. Sleep, and then I would work. So that was kind of the beginning of a homespun house. And now it's really nice because I'm able to work. As soon as they leave, I go down into the studio. And mm-hmm. when when I know Robert's getting the girls, then I will sort of finish up. Mm-hmm. Start to. And my mom works for me. I my mom works that. for me, which is amazing. She twists yarn and puts labels on it. Three days a week, that's what she does. And she ties the yarn to it, prepare it. You just give her all those jobs you don't want to do. I love that. <laughs> she likes doing it. That's good. She enjoys you don't. it. Yeah. <laughs> Tying yarn is okay. Like, it's kind and, of nice to have the sit down sometimes. Mm-hmm. But there are still, I mean, I package the yarns. Um, Robert answers, he like tracks all of the parcels. He, so he's he still. takes care of like accounting. Mm-hmm. He works with, with our accountant. Mm-hmm. Um, but Robert keeps the house clean. Yeah. He relaxes. Love it. <laughs> yeah. That stay at home dad life. Yeah. Why can't I be a better stay at home dad is what I want to yeah. know. Why can't, you're busy all Why the can't time. I relax and clean more? <laughs> you have a job. Oh my gosh. Christine. I have a jobby. This is you my do. jobby. You definitely have a job. Oh my gosh. It takes a lot of time. I, I love can only my job. Okay. So we want to go down to the studio. Yeah. Um, I have a couple more questions. What... You do clubs and stuff that are inspired by, like, what are some of your other favorite things besides knitting? I mean, I think I know a couple, like Harry Potter. What else? What other things do you really like if you couldn't be doing this, knitting or dyeing yarn? Spending time with people. Yeah. You're a people person. <laughs> yeah. Spending time with people. I like to sew. Do you mean nothing creative? Well, no, anything. Like, yeah, I, like, I do like Harry Potter. It's not something that I watch. I would say I constantly listen to Harry Potter albums. That is such a German clock. <laughs> My grandma says it sounds like the bird is sick. She's like, you have a sick bird in there. Because she has a cuckoo clock from Germany. And she thinks ours sounds sick. Does it sound sick to you? A little bit wheezy. <laughs> I like it though. <clears throat> I want a cuckoo clock. I got mine from the Black Forest. That was like one thing that I was like, I am getting a freaking nice black forest cuckoo clock. I really like it. And I wanted to put it in there and Robert, he's not, he does not like kitschy things at all. He's like, absolutely not. So I put it in the winter garden because <laughs> Robert doesn't really hang out in here. This is your space. Yeah. This is your and the space. girls, they spend a lot of time in here playing with like toys. And yeah. Okay. So anyway, like so you're listening on audiobook to Harry Potter? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, my grandma comes here a lot. We spend time talking. My nephew. Yeah. I would say other than knitting and working, we just spend time together. Yeah. It's so great. It's honestly, Molly, I think it's rare. But maybe, that's, again, I'm just from the city. Yeah. And everything's on fast motion well, in my yeah. life. Okay, let's go down to the dye studio. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> there it is. Call your other interviewees. A sick bird lives in there. It's okay. Molly's going to heal the bird knit in here often actually. I love it. What are you knitting on right now? I'm knitting, um, it's called the Color Craze Shawl. That's turning out Tammy so Gore. well. I feel it. Aren't you happy? I like it. It's so much fun to knit. Oh my god. This gosh. is such an enjoyable knit. So you're holding the mohair the whole time? Yeah. Even yeah. if you change color? Mm-hmm. That is so beautiful. And these are the minis? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love that. And look at these pillows. Are these family heirlooms? 
My my great aunt Ethel knit this. And or this one? embroidered this. I'm obsessed with this one. I know, I love that one too. Isn't it so pretty? Oh, I love that. And there's cozy memories. Yeah. There it These is. are literally the first squares, like right here. See, you can't take those out because... Oh no, I remember them. That's all like Regia and... They have a memory. It food. smells like a dye studio. It, it smells, smells like, like wet wool. I don't have that much going because I, I started it quickly. Yeah. Before you came, I, I just dyed a, a little bit of stuff. So this is a complete departure from yeah. the pad in Berlin, right? Oh, <gasps> definitely. This is probably... Okay, the kitchen that I was dying in yeah. is probably like from here to here. <gasps> Not even. Because it was like a small city kitchen. And so did you have to do something special to this space before you started using it? Like, This wasn't even here. Like <gasps> this is, I mean. It was a finished space. It wasn't, this, this side was finished. Uh -huh. And so we had all of these walls <gasps> put in the drywall. I mean, look at mine. This is amazing. I got this dirty pretty quickly, yeah. Don't so you love it? Put in, I really love I'm it. I'm so happy for you. Yeah, it's so nice. <laughs> and did you have to add this? Yeah, we put that up. Is that like a D, what is that? It's a an D air filtration. Okay. <gasps> air filtration system. Look at all your yarn ready to go. My mom did that. Thanks, mama. Yeah. I have and yarn coming look today. look at this. Yeah, those are my pans. Okay, and this is the prep station? This is the oven, so there's yarn oh. cooking in here. Molly, this, I've never seen an oven like this for dyeing. So right now I just have some tonals. Is there a timer that you know when it's done? Or? No, I turn it off before I go to bed. I turn it off, open it up. Oh my gosh, okay, what about, where did I just step into? So this is where I, this is usually I'll put wholesale orders here, but I just shipped some wholesale out. Oh, okay. Um, <gasps> and is this, this is, drying or ready to go? No, this is drying, yarn drying. Molly, this is so beautiful. <laughs> Do you just come down here sometimes and stare at it? No. <laughs> I would. Oh my goodness, look, it's like, yeah, so right now, what do the girls think when they come in here? They must love it. This has been their life since they were little. Like, I don't think they think anything. <laughs> what, what they do down here is paint. <laughs> so like, I don't care whatever gets all over the yeah. floor. Yeah. Look it. And then, this is where we see you in your videos, right? Probably, yeah. This is amazing. Space. Look at it's, all this It's space such a nice have. space, yeah. <gasps> Molly of a homespun house. <laughs> okay, so Christy what? Of what, a, what am I looking here at here? This, what? Is, this is the yarn that's on in the website right now. Molly, you are so organized. <laughs> Thank you. I think you're the most organized dyer I've ever met. Really? Yeah. I this a is a yarn dye. shop. Look at this. Okay, it so it makes it really easy for packaging orders. So like, easy. Yeah. And have, do you do you pack this up for a trunk show or not? This? Yeah, like this operation. No, this is permanent here. Yeah, exactly. Like I, you I'll dye yarn specifically for a trunk for show. Yeah. Yep. Oh my goodness! So this is one color in all the bases, like yeah, together yep. mm -hmm. that it comes Cashmere in. Cashmere DK. It comes and in some, mohair. Some obviously you can see I need to re dye. So yeah. Dye more of. So do you have a repeatable colorway that's your most popular? Speckled. I don't any. I would say I Mermaid of the Black Lake is pretty popular. Yeah. It really goes in fluctuations. Can and you the lighting down here is terrible. No, my camera's pretty good actually. Yeah, Mermaid of the Black Lake. Um right now Dementor's Kiss is super popular. <gasps> Ooh, yeah. So this is the Harry Potter one, right? Mm-hmm. These ones are don't have Harry Potter. So what can you what can you say more say more about that? Like what did you just say? It comes in wa waves? What did you just say? Yeah. Like it, is it the season of the year or what? Definitely the season. Yeah. I mean, obviously if I come out with a new colorway, people are more interested mm -hmm, then. Mm -hmm. But, um, like right now I've started to dye a lot more bright colors because people are getting interested in, in knitting spring. Cause like March, April. And, yeah. yeah. <gasps> your yarn is yeah. so beautiful. This is one of your new ones, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. What's, what's this one called? Dragon fruit. And then what about that one villain? Villain. villain. Vampire. Ah, uh, the va secret vampire. Secret vampire. Yeah. That's a new one too, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go on the other side. There's more over here. Minis? Not, there isn't that much over here. So here I've started to, like I said, I'm, I'm re-dyeing mohair because it's so popular. People go through it so fast. Yeah. So People that's are just stranding right everything now. now. Exactly, yeah. 
And these are some minis. So the, this here is like kind of yarns that are retiring and there isn't much left in stock. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be redying it. This is from the Christmas. Exactly. I don't even think that's in stock right now. I liked that one. I had some stuff in my cart one night on a Christmas night, and I'm like, I can't buy more yarn. <laughs> I seriously did. I had filled it up with homespun house at Christmas. I'm like, when am I going to knit this? Have like, you knit cr Christmas yarn, though? Not really. Really? Yeah. Which one were you using upstairs that we were just looking at? This, yeah, this one? one. Mm -hmm. oh. And these are all kind of, as well, like palette cleansers. There's, it's not something that I will dye again. Mm. I just, it's fun to dye random kind of tonal minis for different ideas because you can use them for so many different things i'm trying to wrap my brain around what you can use them for because i really want to start using minis something like this oh yeah i mean here like you're color using work. bigger stripe but yeah. yeah socks but you don't knit socks and not so much Hats. what keeps it interesting for you this business you have good really good lighting right now by the way <laughs> Gray, you mean? No, it's just like you're right above the the light and all your yarns behind you, so you look like super. You look super <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, what keeps it interesting? Like you don't have a lot of repeatable colors, then, right? You just kind of. No, I have a lot of repeatable colorways. I would say always creating something new. There are mm. times when I love creating repeatable colorways because it's quite meditative. I don't mm. have to think. I can just kind of, you know, throw the colors on the yarn, mm -hmm. listen to music. Um, and then I always have the option of creating something new when I want to be creative. Yeah, because it's right here. Yeah, exactly. <gasps> yeah. It's all right here. So there are some days where I just make new colorways, and then there are lots of days where I just do repeatable colorways. So do you identify more as a an entrepreneur, a businesswoman, a stay-at-home mom, a mom that's making it work, a wife? Like, what do you identify as? A person. Just, just a well-rounded person. Yeah. yeah. I love, I mean, I love working. I wake up every day so excited to work yeah. and create. And when my mom's here, it's, I'm so excited to know that she's here and we get to hang out and she sits in here, watches Grace and Frankie and laughs her head off. So I'm in here dying and I just hear her laughing all <laughs> day. I'm not even kidding. How much, how important is it to have this separation of space for you? Like this this space, close the door, go upstairs, do the mom thing. Is that important? Um, Cause you mentioned that when yeah. Robert goes to pick them up, you kind of finish up and go upstairs. Yeah, it's nice to have it separate because I do like a clean area. Mm -hmm. And it, for me, this doesn't feel homey at all. Yeah, like, this is it's work. It's definitely, exactly. So yeah. it's important in that aspect, but I don't feel compelled to, to come downstairs and work or, yeah. Yeah, you're like, I'm with the kids now. But it's nice that it's in my home, you know, that it's yeah. easy to come down to, and then yeah. I can work as long as. Yeah, I love it. I love it! Thanks for taking me on a tour. Yeah. It's, did, I miss, did I miss anything? What's up? Well, what about Robert's workstation? He has to make a cameo. Oh, and look who else we found down here. There he is! <laughs> Robert of a homespun house. As Molly is caking up my pics, because look at this. It has unicorn in the name. I didn't even realize. I'm going to say goodbye. Bye, Molly of homespun house. <laughs> Thanks for moving to Wisconsin so I could finally meet you. Yeah. It was much closer than Berlin. <laughs> Bye.